Aircraft at Aotearoki, Wellington, HMNZS Achilles is here on a farewell visit before sailing for England to revert to the Royal Navy. Parties of schoolboys and the public take their last opportunity of looking her over. These boys are making sure the gun barrels are really hollow. They make sure everything works too. The Achilles has meant much to New Zealand. A parade of men from the ship's company through the streets of Wellington brings back memories of a parade that followed the Achilles' return after the Battle of the River Plate. Taking the salute is the Prime Minister. The men of the Achilles and their ship belong in our history. In the grounds of Parliament buildings, a mobile cinema unit gives a demonstration. The Prime Minister and Mr. Semple are here to see how it works for the government has established this unit to spread information on soil erosion and soil conservation. With its 16 millimeter projector and hooded screen, the unit will tour the country, giving outdoor screenings of films that show how the problems of soil conservation can be tackled. The old Paikokariki Hill Road near Wellington resounds to crisp exhausts when the New Zealand Sports Car Club Hill Climb is held. Enthusiasts even come from Auckland to listen to the music. The transport department takes more than a professional interest and gives much assistance. The Army SIGS men give up their Saturday to run the radio communications. Over two miles in length and rising 880 feet, the hill is one continuous storm. It's a chance for enthusiasts to let off steam under supervision and without danger to the public. Usually, racing riders and drivers are among the most cautious and considerate of road users. But today, the lid's off. This car did it in under three minutes. That's pretty fast on a course like this. Above the tiled Japanese roofs float paper goldfish to celebrate the boys' festival. Below the bridges, meanwhile, the boys themselves are fishing for tiddlers. This bridge is often visited by the airmen stationed at nearby Iwakuni, and a New Zealand fighter pilot is inspecting the bent pins. 300 years old, the famous Kintai archers are more than a means of getting across water. One of the show sites of Japan, they span the river upstream of the British air base. Down at the airbase on the Delta, morning and afternoon tea time makes Triangle Joe's a full house. This New Zealand YMCA hut is appreciated alike by ground crew and by fighter pilots, and the place is the envy of neighboring British units. Though table tennis in the YM is the only indoor sport, outside many sports have been organized, including boating. Locating a dozen or so Jap naval cutters, the winged Kiwis shared them out with Australian and RAF units to found a popular boating club. The boys of 14th Fighter Squadron are doing all they can to make Japan like home. In this foundry at Petoni, Wellington, the job of making baths for private and state houses is taking first priority. To make the sand moulds in which a bath is cast, a power ejection machine is used forcing the sand into mold shapes. The first of the two sand molds used in casting a bath is lowered onto the foundry floor. The second mold is ready and it's swung into position over the first. The space between these two molds is the final shape that the bath will take. Specially prepared iron from Australia is melted down at the foundry and mixed with a small amount of scrap. In each bath, there'll be 300 weight of metal. Handling white hot molten iron, here being poured into the molds, is no white collar job. But these men are providing essentials for the nation's building program. The mold stands for 15 minutes. The bath is cast. One more to the total of 48 baths that this foundry turns out each day. Before a bath is taken to the ovens for enameling, a grinder removes excess metal and rough edges.
Then the bath is treated with a coat of primer before going to the ovens. Coated with primer, the baths are heated at a temperature of about 1700 degrees Fahrenheit, bringing the metal to a red heat, ready for enameling. While another bath is swung into the ovens, the enamelers go to work spreading a coat of fine powdered glass, which the heat of the oven will fuse into white enamel. A bath ready for a second coat of enamel is swung out. The first coat has been fused on and the enamelers spread the second. One more process of heating and the bath is completed. And ready for dispatch is another stack of baths. New Zealand's housing program is so much further on the way. Lying near the coast, north of the Manawatu River, is the country district known as the Aurora Downs. It is flat, sandy country, which in summer becomes very dry. Yet in spite of the dryness, it is a prosperous dairying district. The farms are well cared for, and the homesteads neat and comfortable. The cheese factory is the cornerstone of the district's economic life, and the hall of its social life. The attraction today is the Young Farmers Club Field Day. From Palmerston North, 20 miles away, comes a bus full of high school boys. These are young farmers in the making. The fielding boys are even more enthusiastic. They've biked 22 miles. First item on the program is a demonstration of fruit tree pruning by a horticultural instructor. He points out the difference between the fat fruit buds and the small wood buds. You cut your tree accordingly, and you have to distinguish between varieties. Pruning a Cox's orange is a different process from cutting back an Irish peach. For most young farmers, tractor driving is the most popular job, and they're always interested in hearing what a tractor can do. Leaving the tractor running on the lock, the demonstrator invites someone to drive it. This lad takes up the challenge. Wearing short pants is no handicap to putting a tractor through its paces. In this district, the cow is the all-important animal, and knowing how to pick a good cow is the first requirement of successful dairy farming. From an expert on jerseys, they learn how to do it. It is in providing these contacts that young farmers' clubs are so very useful, and the 33 members of the Oroa Downs Club can congratulate themselves on a very successful day.